and a retired soldier before then stealing guns. Via Skype, we have Johan Berger from the Institute of Security Studies to take us through some of the crime patterns in South Africa. A very good evening to you, uh, Mr. Berger. Thank you very much for joining us. It seems that criminals are becoming more and more daring. What is the reason behind this? Yes, good evening. I, I, I think there are a number of reasons. Um, probably the biggest um, reason for criminals having the freedom to do what they are doing lies in the fact that the police's crime intelligence division has largely collapsed, uh, especially under the um, uh, during the term of Lieutenant General uh, Richard Ndluli, who now finally the police managed to get rid of. And uh, we know uh, there's currently some evidence about uh, continuing cases of corruption and, and other criminal acts in, in crime intelligence. So the, the, the most important arm of the police service in terms of generating intelligence about the whereabouts, the existence, the composition of these uh, organized crime syndicates uh, no longer properly exists within the police service. So that, that I think is the big problem. Now if you look at um, at crime levels in South Africa, generally speaking, just in the last five years, we've seen our murder rate uh, going up by, by, by more than 22% in the last as a result of the, um, of the uh, 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 rising crime levels that we've seen in this country. For example, if you look at aggravated robbery, aggravated robbery in the last five years increased by by um, something like like 40 percent. Now, I mean, these are huge increases, and this is largely as a result of the uh, actions of organized crime syndicates in South Africa, and they have the freedom to do what they are doing because the ability of crime intelligence is at its, low, its lowest level s since 1994. So these are continuing problems that the police will have to look at if they wish to uh, improve the situation. Now, Mr. Berger, one of the most concerning things out of this was indeed confirmation coming in from the police commissioner saying that uh, 10 firearms are actually uh, taken from the police station, from the premises. That's also quite worrying as to uh, what transpired of that. Yes, uh, you know, I, I think what is obvious from what these criminals were doing um, and, and a proper investigation will show whether my speculation about this is correct or not. But these criminals were in search of cash, therefore they bombed the ATM and they will probably uh, continue to do so in search of, of accumulating uh, money to, to cash fund the uh, operation. And I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that they are plan, planning some sort of major operation somewhere. And for this kind of operation, they need money, but they also need firearms. And they included in the firearms that they are searching for would be um, uh, submachine guns. And my understanding is amongst the firearms that they, that they stole at uh, in Kobo police station are submachine guns. So, so clearly this is what they were looking for. So if I was in the police, I would definitely be concerned with what they what they are planning and and hopefully use whatever intelligence they can muster to try and determine um, possible targets uh, something else that that just occurred to me in kzn which is uh, adjoining to to the eastern cape the police there have been relatively successful over the last few few months in terms of apprehending and even killing uh, armed uh, criminals and, and I think there's a, a huge possibility that there's some kind of movement across the border into uh, the Eastern Cape, which these criminals may, may, may believe to be less risky than the situation in KZN. Definitely. And just briefly before we wrap it up, let's talk about the security contingent and arrangements currently in and around South African police stations. Well, you know, I agree with what the minister has said in this regard. Uh, police stations are there to serve the community. So they need to be accessible at all times, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
Now, it's extremely difficult. Police officers who work in the front offices, the, the community service centers, they are, of course, armed as are those who work outside in the patrol vehicles, attending to complaints and so on. But usually they also have access to uh, the firearm safe or the armory at the police station, and criminals are aware of this. So I think um, in terms of improving the security at police stations, I think we need to make it less attractive for criminals. That means you'll have to remove any ex excess firearms that are kept at police stations so that even when criminals do attack police stations, they do not have access to those, to those kinds of firearms. That would be one thing. I also like the idea of putting up um, CCTV cameras and, and, and certainly each individual police station would have to be considered in terms of how to improve the security at that police station. But, I mean, this is without question. Uh, we need, the police certainly needs to give attention to improving security at police station. But I think the main idea would be to make it uh, less attractive to criminals in terms of the availability of, of firearms. Thank you very much for your time this evening, Mr. Johanna Berger from the Institute of Security Studies. And that's where we take a short break here. Yeah, do stay tuned.